The story of Pitcher's Thistle is an interesting story. It is only found on sand dunes on the upper Great Lakes. So this thistle is not a weed. You're never gonna see it in your driveway. You're never gonna see it in your garden or in a hay field. It's only found on sand dunes and only on Lakes Michigan, Huron, and one location on Lake Superior. And interestingly, in Canada, the bulk of Pitcher's Thistle is found on Manitoulin Island. My name is Judith Jones. I'm a biologist and environmental consultant. I live on Manitoulin Island. I've been studying Pitcher's Thistle since 2000, when it was first listed originally as endangered. And at that time, I, I knew it as a plant, but I didn't know anything about it. And most people didn't know anything about it. When something gets listed, the first thing they do is they say, well, what's bothering it? Where are they? Where do they live? How many are there? And so that task of finding all that out fell to me. Pitcher's thistle lives in a very particular habitat in a very particular part of the sand dunes, too. It likes open, loose sand without too much crowding. It doesn't like neighbors. So usually it's found at the front of the beach towards the water because the water and the wind and the icebergs in the wintertime all work on the ground to move the sand around. And that's what Pitcher's thistle likes. It needs that open, loose sand. They have an unusual life cycle. It will come up as a seedling and it will live for a number of years just as a ring of leaves. So just a bunch of leaves on the ground, we call that a rosette. And it will live for anywhere from about three to maximum 12 or 13 years. And then when it reaches the threshold or whatever threshold it is, whether it's temperature or root size or something like that, it will send up a flowering stalk and make a thistle head like a thistle, you know, and uh, set seed. And after setting seed, the plant dies. What's confusing is human beings think long life, oh, that's good, 12 years better. For plants, it's the other way around because the plant, the goal is to flower, set seed, and that's it. So for pitcher's thistle, the ones that manage to live three years and then flower, those are the ones that are doing really well. And the ones that are having to take 12 years to get there, they're not doing as well. This is a very special plant and it's adapted to some very unusual conditions. This is a hard place for a plant to make a living. Things that live out here, they get sandblasted. They're subjected to extremes of drought, temperature, wind, burial, shifting substrate, no water, high levels of light. It's just a very extreme place to have to live and most plants out here couldn't hack it. So these plants are adapted to to dealing with this kind of a situation. It's pretty, it's pretty miraculous that things are able to live out here. We're actually tracking these thistles. We monitor them every year. My daughter Mira, who is my field assistant this year and who has assisted many years on Pitcher's Thistle, we actually come out here and we count them. We count one thistle, two thistles, three thistles, one baby one, two flowering ones, four more thistles. And we do that because we have to know how many there are. We can't say something's rare unless we know how many there are and where they are. And we come out, we count them, we see how their population is doing. Are they flowering? Are they reaching maturity? We track whether ATV use is bothering them. We track whether they're being browsed because deer and geese and other animals eat them. Insects also eat them. We track whether human structures are bothering them, whether wind blowouts and erosion are bothering them. We look at invasive species like common reed or any other non-native yeah, things that don't belong on dunes. We know from though. year to year what's Maybe. bothering them. For Manitoulin Island, we now have 15 years of data on the numbers of thistles at every site. So we know that they've gone up and then they've gone down and we know pretty much what threats are there. I tracked this thing all the way through the boom cycle where it exploded, it, it, population numbers went up 800%. And everybody said, oh, this thing's recovering great. We don't have to keep it as threatened. Um, it's able to recover on its own just fine. And now, all of a sudden, population's going down quickly. So what's this all about? So now the story's getting a lot more interesting, so I'm, I'm hooked. Manitoulin Island is almost entirely private land, so in talking with all these landowners, the first thing that we want people to do is just to be aware that it's there. We're not telling people, don't go on the dune. We're not telling them, don't walk on the dune. We're not telling them, don't play volleyball on the dune. We're just saying, you know, pick that spot and use that as the spot. Because people have their campfires and they have their volleyball nets. In fact, Pitcher's Thistle likes volleyball courts because there's open, loose sand. There is a perception that a nice sand dune is only sand with no grass on it and no leaves and no sticks. 
Actually, dunes are like forests. They're their own system. The Pitcher's thistle is kind of um, an indicator of the health of this system itself. All of these plants here are natural, native things that have been in North America since the glaciers left. Pitcher's thistle is on these dunes in places where there hasn't been a lot of disturbance. So this is an indication of what a natural dune looks like. I'm certain that we can find a way where we can all enjoy the beach and still allow nature to be able to do what it does. For me, it's an interesting story to find out what does this thistle need and to make sure that we can protect that and also still get to play volleyball out here.